I recently have been wondering just how expensive can houses in Singapore get. Today we are going to visit some of the richest areas in Singapore where the most expensive house can go up to $230 million. So I'm right now in front of a house that was rented for about $200,000 per month. So behind me is the house that TikTok CEO of Singapore recently bought for $86 million. The most expensive property sold in Singapore for a whopping $230 million. So we are now at Queen Astrid Park where the richest tycoons of Singapore such as TikTok CEO stays. This area is identified as one of Singapore's good class bungalow area or GCB area for short. Basically a GCB must be minimally 1.4k square meters, roughly about the size of 15 formal flats which is really really big. Now let us explore some of the GCBs that is found in one of the richest areas in Singapore. Let's go! So I'm right now in front of a house that was rented for about $200,000 per month. So $200 is the monthly rent if you were to get this house. Like it's really re really very secluded. The walls are really high and the entrance is really nice. Look at how high the walls are. So behind me is the house that TikTok CEO of Singapore recently bought for $86 million. I heard he's planning to do some renovation to this place. Externally, we can see that it looks pretty run down. But I would say that it certainly has like really good uh, privacy features. I mean, look at how high the trees are. The trees totally block people from outside from looking into what the house looks like. So this is basically how the street looks which is really beautiful and you can see over here this is how high the trees are so it basically gives him the privacy that he needs yeah but check out his neighbor's house wow everything is a mansion So fun fact, there are about 1.5 million residential units in Singapore in 2021 and only 2,800 of them are GCBs. So that means if you live in a GCB, you are very likely to be the top 0.2% of the people in Singapore. Wow. So behind me is the house of Sir James Dyson, the co-founder of Dyson, a billionaire and also a permanent resident in Singapore. Since 2012, only Singaporeans or permanent residents in Singapore who make significant contributions to the economy of Singapore can buy a good class bungalow. So obviously we can see that Singapore considers Sir James Dyson to be one of them. So you might think, hey, this government policy actually sounds pretty exclusive to local Singaporeans but it's actually relatively easy to be a permanent resident in Singapore if you are rich. As long as a foreigner donates $2.5 million into a Singapore family office or a business or a fund, they can actually apply for Singapore PR through Singapore's Global Investment Program. And after just only two years, they can apply for citizenship. For example, Hai Di Lao's co-founder Shu Ping actually opened a family office in Singapore in 2020 to help manage her wealth. The number of family officers actually doubled from 400 to 700 uh, from 2020 to 2021. Oh yeah, and the family officers are founded mostly by people from China. Uh... 
So I'm here right now at 33 Nam Sing Road, which is the most expensive property sold in Singapore for a whopping $230 million. So this house over here has a land area of 84,543 square feet, which is, I don't know, about the size of 100 four-room flats. So it's really, 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 really big. You know it's locked, so we can't go in. Let's take a look. Look at the neighbor's house. I mean, just look at the neighbor's house. It's super big. So this is the land that the $230 million house sits on. So it's relatively quiet and blocked by trees. So it's really, really private as well. So yep, here are some of the most expensive houses in Singapore. I hope this gives you insights into the lives of these crazy rich Asians uh, living in Singapore. In the course of filming this video, I also started to wonder about the issue of inequity in Singapore. Lately, I've been observing the rising property prices uh, in Singapore and I think it's really worrying. Um, it feels like the, the rich or the wealthy are just uh, snapping up the houses as quickly as possible and it makes me wonder like, would there be a day where houses are no longer affordable to middle class people like myself in Singapore in the future? Anyways, this marks the end of my video. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Uh, see you next time. Bye!